Learning to do some basic edits in GarageBand is going to separate your work from the novice. And don't worry, these tips are pretty simple. Learning to make a few edits and have some great organizational skills will take your production to a whole new level. So we've learned to build the basic track, but now it's time to start editing. That's where the magic is. Let's look at a few key commands that are going to be essential. We already took a look at cycle, which could either be turned on and off up here by clicking this region. You could use the letter C to turn it on and off, or you could click anywhere up in this ruler or timeline and draw on your cycle up there. Remember, the point of a cycle is that we could loop a region, and this is going to be extremely important as we edit our tracks. Now let's take a look at the arrangement track. We could show our arrangement track here, or we could use Command Shift in the letter A to show and hide it. In the arrangement track, we could add different markers by hitting this plus sign. By hitting it repeatedly, it'll automatically create markers that are common in our song, and we could arrange these by going in between and dragging the length of each one. We could rename them by clicking on the name and selecting a different name. It's going to be important to zoom in or zoom out, which we know we could use the top right zoom tool to do. But there's an easier way to zoom in and out of our session, which is to use Command plus the right or left arrow keys. By doing that, we could easily zoom in and out. Let's start to make some arrangement choices. We know that our initial intro is just a small drum region, so let's mark that, and then we'll call our first section the verse, we'll call our next section the chorus, and then we'll call this part the bridge. I'm going to create one more, and we'll just call this the outro. What's really important about these arrangement tracks is that by clicking each section, we could drag and reorder the different sections. And by doing this, we could rearrange how our song is constructed. Let's say on this chorus, I would like a double chorus where the chorus happens twice. By holding down the key option, we could actually double the chorus just by option, clicking on the chorus, and dragging it over. Let's say in between the two choruses, we wanted the intro to happen again. Click to the right to zoom in and option click the intro. Drag it on over and put it in between the two choruses. Now we have an intro right in between the two choruses. It's that simple to just go in and rearrange our tracks. Since we made some crazy edits, I reopened the track again and I wanna take a look at some ideas as to how to deal with headroom. We're basically talking about how much volume do we have before we clip the master volume. Remember, the master volume is up here on the top right. You can use the volume to make things a little louder or softer, but typically, if you leave your volume at 0 dB and adjust the volumes on the left mixer, you're going to find that your gain staging, or let's just call it level matching, is going to be a little better. The general rule for gain staging in good headroom is to make sure that we stick in the green zone and sometimes the yellow zone when dealing with the master volume. We want to try and avoid going into the red, which will be on the far right. Let's see what happens as I crank my volumes too much on the left side. You could see that we were always showing green, that we had a nice strong master signal. It was sometimes going into the yellow, which is fine. But then we started going into the red, and that red meant that sometimes we were entering into clipping, and that's where we're getting distortion in our signal. So in this case, you're better off taking all your volumes, bring them down a little bit, and then just adjust your headphone volume or your monitor volume to compensate if you need more volume. Let's consider some general ideas when dealing with pan. Last time we discussed that by clicking on these rotary knobs, we could decide where we put our instruments in the stereo field. Are they right in the center? Are they off to the left? Are they off to the right? Some general rules are gonna be that our basses should always reside in the middle. Our drums will typically reside at zero, and things such as lead vocals and other important elements will also reside in the middle. So what goes to the left and what goes to the right? Well, usually our accompanying instruments, things such as a guitar part or a piano part, will go a little more to the left or the right. Let's solo the piano and the guitar and listen to what happens as we adjust their stereo field. As cool as it can sound to have things go super far to the left and super far to the right, resist the temptation to make everything go hard left or hard right, meaning you went to the extremes of all the way to the left or all the way to the right. Typically, that'll feel like things could become lopsided. 
Usually somewhere in between will be better. Let's listen to what happens if I take my bass or my drums and put them to the left or the right. Once again, I'm going to solo them here. By bringing the bass or the drums to the left or the right, it really makes things feel lopsided. So that's why typically we'll have our main elements like bass, vocals, and drums stay centered. Here's a quick tip. If you find that you've taken your pan all the way to the left or the right and you just want to bring it back to center, option click. It'll reset that pan. The same thing goes for our volume. By option clicking on the volumes, we can bring them back to zero dB. And if you made any adjustments to your master volume, that applies there too. You can see I've built out this track quite a bit. And I want to show you some of the techniques that I use to do so. Let's zoom out, and I'm going to delete most of these regions. And let's zoom back in. Right now, we're looking at the main building block of my song. The way in which I went about building my song was pretty simple. I recorded a few regions. We could see the MIDI regions in green, we could see the audio regions in blue, and we could see our drummer regions in this orange color. If I wanted to shorten any of these regions, I could go to the bottom right, click and drag, and just shorten them this way. If I want to shorten from the beginning, I could click on the bottom left and drag. If I click and drag past where I recorded, you'll see that it won't show any information. Therefore, it's only going to allow us to see the information of what we recorded. In order to loop a section, we have a few options. One is that we could option, click, and copy a track by dragging it. Another option is we could go to the top right, click, and drag using the loop tool. And this will just loop our region over and over and over again. Here's something cool. If you use your trim tool to trim a region to be smaller and then loop it, you will actually loop only the smaller region, which can be great for building tension or creating stutter effects and a lot more. If you have a specific place that you would like to trim a region, you could highlight the region, go to your ruler and hit Command T. You can now see that Command T split our region into two different regions based on where the playhead was. And this can be really useful when you need to select all regions and make an edit for all regions in the exact same spot. Command T now created two totally separate regions for all of our tracks. Let's see how we could use this to our advantage. I'm going to actually delete all of these tracks and I'm going to create an audio track. Now let's create a cycle of just one measure. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to hit record and create a few drum sounds. Boom, boom. Okay, that's about as good as I get when it comes to beatboxing. What I wanted to show you here is that when you record in cycle mode, or if I was to just record over this take, we create new takes. And these takes can be accessed up here where this number is. Notice as I switch between takes, we could see the different takes I recorded. Let's listen to each one again. Boom, boom. Okay, this is far from magnificent, but let's see what we could do with this. First off, I'm going to option click and just copy each one of these. And let's bring up the different regions we were working with. By using the trim tool, we could come on in and delete parts of the audio that we didn't need. Now, if I wanted to call this symbol, I could actually edit and arrange this like my voice was the actual symbol. Okay, that wasn't amazing, but this could be a fun way to come on in and learn how to edit. Let's do the same thing here and call this one snare. Once again, I'm gonna come on in and just make a few cuts where I need to remove some silence and background noise. I'm gonna put my snare part on beats two and beats four. And then up last, let's bring in our kick drum. And I'm gonna call this one kick. Once again, Command T to trim the region. And let's put our bass drum on beats one and three. And let's listen to what this sounds like. Boom. 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 Okay, I'll admit that's one of the lamest beatboxing sessions I've ever heard. But what we did accomplish is we learned to come on in, trim regions, move them around, lock them into our timeline, and make something that not only has some rhythm to it, but now is also cleaner. And let's not forget our other tools. For instance, if I wanted to take this top part and make the symbol just loop, that's actually really easy to do. Make each region exactly as long as it needs to be. So in this case, I'm going to make them eighth notes 
and then use your loop tool to loop it out. And now we have instant eighth notes in what's supposed to be a symbol. Boom, 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 boom. And that's just the beginning of all this great editing that we could do in GarageBand. We have a few options when it comes to MIDI editing. Go to GarageBand, go to Preferences, and you can see here that our software instrument recordings can either be merged or they could replace a previous recording. Merging is great when you can't play all the parts at once. So for instance, if I wanted to play the bass drum part and then layer the snare and then layer the cymbal, merging can be great. Replacing is great when maybe you tried playing a piano part, it didn't work out, and you just wanna wipe it clean. Cycle on means that when we have our cycle going, do we wanna merge that cycle or do we wanna create takes? Let's switch to create takes. We're going to cycle this. We're going to create a software instrument. I'm gonna hit create. We'll keep it on the default keyboard that it loads with. We'll come on up to window, show musical typing, and once again, show off some of my horrendous musical typing piano parts. Boom. So now just like we had with our audio regions, we could come on in and select from different takes. Here's take three. Take two. And just like we did with our audio regions, option drag, and you can now select from different takes at a time. So for instance, I could start off with take two and then go into take three. And if I wanna just copy all of this over, we could have two of them side by side by selecting them all, option dragging, and then adjusting our cycle region. And don't forget, before we bounce our track, don't forget to take your end marker. Otherwise, when we export our track, we're gonna be left with a ton of blank space at the end. That's super important. I'm looking forward to our next videos where we take a look at some more audio recording, MIDI editing, drummer regions, and a lot more.